Awesome. Hi, everyone, and welcome to day three of Big Blue Button World 2021. Today is focused on developers, and we're very excited to welcome you to today's events with a keynote kickoff from Blindside Network's co-founder and CEO, Fred Dixon. Uh, Fred is based in Canada, and he is what I like to call the one of the masterminds behind Blindside Networks and Big Blue Button. Fred uh, will be talking about what Big Blue Button will look like going forward, what the roadmap is for it today. And Fred is a really kind, genuine person who really, truly cares about computers and open source software and learning. Feel free to put your questions, comments, and conversation in the chat. And there will be time for Q&A at the end. We'll also be releasing the recording of this session at the end of the week. So you'll be able to share it with your friends and watch it as many times as you like. So without any further ado, welcome, Fred. Thanks, Jess. And yes, I do wear two hats. Uh, I am involved with Blindside Networks, who started the Big Blue Button Project. I'll talk a little bit about the history. My hat I'll be wearing today is the product manager for Big Blue Button. All right, so what is Big Blue Button? Uh, it's an open source web conferencing system for online learning. Uh, it's a commercial virtual classroom that companies provide. Uh, it's a platform on which other developers and companies can build upon. Uh, it's an active ecosystem of teachers, developers, administrators, and commercial companies. It's all the above, obviously. So I have some screenshots that I collect over time just from people who post on Twitter of that. So here's an example of Big Blue Button being used in a class. Uh, there's an example screenshot. It looks like some instructors getting together to collaborate. Uh, another example of an online session that was going on. Here's a whiteboard being used to help students with a particular problem. Credit to anybody who can figure what that is out. I guess something to do with maybe fluid. And here's like a, a Brady Bunch type view of instructors again, chilling out with Big Blue Button. Uh, lots of stories have been written about it. Here's one from Sijo Liverpool University uh, in China using Big Blue Button. Here is a slide from the presentation yesterday by Multi Dryer. Uh, 79 universities were quizzed, and the one virtual classroom that stood out amongst all of them was Big Blue Button. So, lots of people using Big Blue Button, lots of people using Big Blue Button around the world. I wanted to step back for a moment and say, why does Big Blue Button exist? So we can talk about the product, which we will in a few minutes, and the roadmap and the differentiation, but just why does our project exist? So I want to pull back for a moment and just everybody take a breath and just think about what's the most important thing in our world right now. Well, I would argue it's the world itself. And we have one planet. Uh, there is no planet B. And whatever we do with the planet is what we bequeath to our gener the generations that follow us. So one very key topic of today is sustainability. And so if you look at the UNESCO Sustainable Goals, uh, they list 17 goals that are shared amongst the world where we can make improvements upon to make the world a better place. And so one of those goals is quality education. And in a recent report, they put education at the core of a lot of these. And they used colors that may not be easy to read, but if I just zoom in on one of them, like quality inclusive education for all is a key driver in eradicating poverty. So Big Blue Button exists because the quality of our life and the planet and the future of it, and therefore the future of the generations, really resides um, on a foundation of quality education available to everyone in the world. And so when you think about Big Blue Button and all the things that it's done over the years, because we're open source, because we focus on one market, which is online learning, we provide a platform in which teachers can engage in students around the world. And so when you think about the benefit of education, I mean, we all have our own lives, it's busy. There's 7 billion people on the planet they all deserve access to a high quality education and it can transform their lives. And by transforming their lives, it transforms society. By transforming society, we improve the planet for everybody. So when you think about why Big Blue Button exists, it really exists to empower world, the world's educators to teach online. And all the things that we're gonna talk about in the next 40 minutes 
about the roadmap, the features, our differentiation, the commercial companies, the great ideas we have. You know, yes, there are entrepreneurial opportunities that the project creates, but there's a huge social benefit. And I must share with you that it's the, you know, it's the pride of what I've been doing the last 12 years to be able to build something that can help the world and specifically help teachers in the world teach students online and benefit hopefully many people around the world. So let me talk about the differences of the glue button first, just in terms of what it is we differentiate. We always say three things. We are born in the classroom, not the boardroom. We are open source. And we are improved by a global community of developers. And we have deep integration with the learning management systems, which is where teachers live. They live inside an LMS. So I want to talk about born in the classroom. We are born in the classroom because here is a picture I took back in 2007 when Richard Alam, uh, the chief technical, uh, the CTO for uh, the project, the chief, chief architect, described for me Big Blue Button. So you can tell it's a classroom because uh, it's got a chalkboard and it's probably it's university. That was asterisks we used to use years ago. And he was describing me the picture, the, the pieces of the product. This was actually what Big Blue Button looked like in 2007. It was based on Adobe Flash. Red 5 had just come out. It was all open source. You could share a presentation. You could do group chat. You had web participants and you could dial into the conference bridge. And it was super cool and it worked. And uh, there were some very enthusiastic instructors at Carleton University that convinced me that this project was going to have potential. It just needed a bit of push. And so Richard and I started pushing and pushing and we just never stopped. So uh, from that early design, we had some folks involved. Tyler Copeland has been designing the UI for Big Blue Button for 13 years now. And so we did revs of the UI. Here's a screenshot of a later version of it. You can see the whiteboard has crept in. Uh, these were early designs of the HTML5 client back in 2013. There is another design. So nothing's coded yet, but we're thinking about how do we move it pure to the browser. Uh, these are early prototypes. You can see there's a, a focus on mobile. So here, I think I'm holding up the mobile client as it sees what the it follows what the instructors are doing. More designs in terms of how the layout would look and how that would work on a mobile device. Uh, more refinement in designs. We had lots of developer summits along the way. This is every six months we would get together, Brazil, Canada, and we would basically collaborate and push the project forward. And you would see these as releases in the versions lots of work on the UI. And after many versions later, uh, we came out with in 2020, uh, a pure HTML5 client for Big Blue Button. It actually had been released the year before, but we formally switched over and life was amazing. And then this guy showed up. So COVID hit and uh, let's talk about some open source and how that enabled Big Blue Button to spread around the world. So we have a very active open source project, like really active. Uh, when COVID hit, I would wake up in the morning and there would be a hundred posts to our mailing list. So the days where I could perhaps follow up on everything, maybe not so much now. But open source was really important because it enabled other people to collaborate on the project. It enabled Big Blue Button to have a much larger presence around the world than if we were just another small commercial company shilling out our web conferencing system and charging $39.95 a month for it. Um, as an open source project, it meant many people could use it, many people could contribute to it. So in terms of like the growth, when COVID hit, we saw an amazing growth in terms of the activity around Big Blue Button. This is just hits, you know, activity on our website, you know, a million people in a space of probably two or three months. This was a graph taken from one of the commercial companies who provide hosting. Uh, before March, it was kind of cooking along, and then things just went off the scale to where you, they were hosting 60 times the, uh, the capacity that they'd been hosting a few months before. So in the thick of all this is Big Blue Button. Like this is what we're using right now to do Big Blue Button World, and it is the core of our sort of ecosystem. And around that, pieces had been built out over the last couple of years. Uh, green light is a front end, Scale light for load balancing, BB events to pull out some analytics. I'll talk about it a little bit later. Lots of integrations. And then suddenly in 2020, the world needed to move online. So it turned out that these pieces were both necessary and sufficient. 
to enable uh, universities and colleges all around the world to start creating scalable instances of IgloButton. And scalable instances they did create. So from a spoke talk yesterday from Andy, this is the screenshot from, I think, Prometheus uh, monitoring their activity at Baden Wittenberg. This is 4,000 big blue button servers reaching 185,000 concurrent students and teachers collaborating online in virtual classes using big blue button, all from open source. I cannot tell you how proud that makes us as a project that we were able to help that many people in this one particular instance and then just multiply that by all those around the world. There was a map that was put together a few weeks ago showing people could uh, indicate uh, if their school was using Big Blue Button, uh, lots in Europe and Germany. And the project itself is managed by a core group of committers. So everything that goes into Big Blue Button, every pull request that goes in, will get reviewed by one of these people. And these people have been sort of invited into the core committers over time because they've contributed so much to the project. And you can see the names and the sort of the roles in our FAQ. I, I want to point out too, recently, uh, Hiroshi Suga, uh, a biology professor in Hiroshima, has contributed, I think, 46 commits over probably a dozen pull requests. And he's just been polishing the edges around Big Blue Button. Again, it's so satisfying to see people uh, take on some of the work to improve the product because in doing so, makes the product better for everybody else. Uh, certainly satisfaction for Hiroshi, but it also frees up some of those core committer times to work on the core capabilities, which I will talk about in a few moments. Another pull request I want to give a shout out to, uh, Liongate, Liongate AG. Uh, there's a talk later today, or I think tomorrow on it. Uh, they contributed background blur. So the Jitsi project had uh, incorporated background blur based on some uh, work that Google had open source. And so that project, uh, that work got pulled into Big Blue Button. So you will see background blur in a future update. And it is because a company stepped up and said, we're building products on Big Blue Button. There's this piece that's missing. We think we can do it. Let's add it. And it will make not only the project more competitive, but the company more competitive as well. And this is how the project has improved over the years and really improved over the last 14 months. So I said three things in the beginning, born in the classroom, open source, and the LMS integrations. The learning management systems are at the core for any school or college. There's very few now that would be running without one, especially during the, after the pandemic. Some of the more popular ones, Canvas, Schoology, T2L, uh, which uses us through a third-party company uh, that built a virtual classroom on Big Blue Button as a design win. Uh, Moodle and Sakai. Moodle, I want to give a special shout out to. It is the world's most popular learning management system globally. And if you look at this map, this is sort of like a chart about LMS adoption uh, from Phil on Tech. He publishes it every six months and it shows the market share over time. The B is next to the learning management systems that have built Big Blue Button in to their core. And so it is part Canvas, Sakai, Moodle, Schoology, Denzibar, Brightspace. So in terms of like the adoption by learning management systems over the years, they have all standardized on Big Blue Button. They may offer integrations with others, but it has been built into the core for all of these. In terms of Moodle, Moodle has a special place in our heart because it is the world's learning, the world's LMS. It's the most popular one globally. So I pulled this out. Uh, 21,000 sites are running the Big Blue Button integration, which uh, Jesus, which talked about yesterday on Scale Light, uh, has been leading the development of for years. And if you look at the most popular plugins, uh, Big Blue Button ranks number two overall in download plugins in the last 12 months. And a big blue button is going into Moodle core in 4.0. So the Moodle project in its code base will ship with the big blue button plugin built in, which is amazing. And it shows that the world needs really good solutions for virtual class for online learning, both synchronous with big blue button and asynchronous with projects like Moodle. Uh, there's another integration I wanna give a shout out to. Uh, uh, will be spoken about tomorrow, the next cloud integration as well. So check it out. Okay, so I wanna talk about roadmap and really roadmap, I'm gonna break it into two areas. There's core capabilities, which are sort of under the hood, which a lot of the core developers spend a lot of time improving. And there's features that are visible most specifically to teachers and students. So in kind of not really in particular order, but here are a lot of the core things that in Big Blue Button you would look at and say, okay, 
I like the product from the surface, but I want to make sure things are taken care of for security, stability, usability, scalability, accessibility, localization, privacy, distribution. So I'm going to talk about each one of those for a few moments. Security improved a lot over the last 14 months. We had a lot of people reviewing the product, giving us feedback on it, and we worked with many of them. A lot of things got fixed. A lot of things got improved. If you have any feedback on security or security issues, please just send us an email, security at biglubutton.org. Tell us if you found something, how to reproduce it. We'll work on fixing it. It's really important that we make sure the product with many eyes, we take advantage of the community to make sure it's really secure. And some of the stuff we did in 2.3, like running LibreOffice in a restricted Docker environment, uh, was directly related to making sure that we did the steps necessary to make some parts of the product as uh, secure as we can. Stability, super important. Uh, we want to have large sessions with large number of users and not have to worry about um, any issues. It's a big ask to do a virtual classroom. But as I say to a, a, the project over the years, if it was easy, someone else would have already done it. So it's kind of nice to do something that's fairly hard. The learning never stops. But when we do uh, release each new version, we want each version to be more stable than the last. And that has been the goal for the project. So a lot of stuff happened in 2.3, refactoring user list, the chat, multiple node processes. What we'll be doing is frequent updates to 2.3, probably every month as we meet, as we find things. And a lot of the stuff, if you look at the release notes, it's a lot of bug fixes. So uh, there's a lot of review and testing that goes on internally. The real testing goes on the community and we look forward to feedback. And if you find a bug, send us a bug. A video, steps reproduce, very helpful. Privacy is really important. It has been probably no more important than in Germany. And so the fact that it's open source, you can run Big Blue Button on site. And there is a privacy document in terms of how you can sort of lock Big Blue Button down if you don't want the recordings, if you don't want it logging stuff. Uh, there's some documentation that's been created by the community on proving that. And we will continue to improve that documentation and make sure as an open source project, we respect students' privacy. The distribution. So currently we're packaged on Ubuntu 18.04. That was for 2.3. And we are working on releasing the packaging scripts. They're just two twined together with the release process we have internally. But we've been working with members of the community for a couple months now. Some of the capabilities you saw go into 2.3, like the override files, got directly contributed by the team of people uh, working on. Uh, Mateus was one of them from our presentation yesterday. So uh, you're going to see packaging uh, available, shorter release cycles. We don't want to do 14-month release cycles anymore. It's it's hard, especially when you're improving the existing product. And we're going to move to Ubuntu 2004 and beyond. And some of that is required to update the WebRTC SFU component. Paula will be talking about that later today. All right, scalability. We want to put, we recommend 100 users. We want to push this further. And I think in 2.3 with the back end, front end, we can do more. So we'll continue to look for ways to improve the scalability. Localization is just cooking along nicely. Thanks to TransFX, Big Blue Button is localized in about 55 languages and we'll continue to, uh, to leverage it. So if you want to contribute to the project, you can contribute a localization for your language. And usability, uh, I showed some UI designs earlier on. Powder has been shepherding the project. Our goal is to always make each release more capable and more usable. And we are focusing on one interface that works on mobile, desktop, Chromebook, and so on. And we will always be working on the UI as well. You're always going to see us polish it. Accessibility is really important. So uh, we're WK 2.0 accessible uh, with some exceptions. So some things in the future we plan, the way shortcuts are handled, the way the screen reader interacts, and improvement in the theming as well for contrast. So you will always see work on accessibility in BigBlueButton. So today, if you use a screen reader, you should be able to tap through the interface and so on. All right. So I want to talk about features, things that are visible. And I will not try to cover like all the features that are an issue tracker. There's many that are there. But I thought I would highlight sort of where our head is at in terms of focusing on the teachers and students, and primarily the teacher. So 2.4 uh, is an alpha. Uh, Anton had released an update to it uh, about, about a week ago. So you can try it out. Anonymous polls, extend duration. These are things we hear back from the community. I indicate who's sharing the webcam, reduce the mirror effect, uh, pop the messages in the chat a bit more for moderator and more control over the layout. I encourage you to try it out and give us feedback on it. 
Okay, so I want to transition to just we do we do this open source project. We focus on online learning, and to do that, we focus on the instructor. The instructor is key to the students um, having a very effective online class. So if you look at the use cases that are typical, uh, the instructor may be tutoring office hours, they may be flipping the classroom where they're recording things ahead of time. They could do group collaboration, which may be just giving the students the ability to collaborate. And that's also in breakout rooms as well. And the core use case is online classes. So if I just look at engagement, you know, some of the features like raise hand is really just engaging with the instructor. But a lot of the features in our product are engaging with instructor and with students. So if you're writing on the whiteboard together, you're doing polling, you're engaging with each other. So uh, briefly, there are lots of theory behind learning. One of the most popular ones is Bloom's taxonomy, which is kind of like a waterfall where if you're going to learn something new, you have to remember. So if I was going to say to you as a Macintosh and Apple, you'd have to remember that. You have to be able to understand the difference between maybe a Macintosh and a Granny Smith. Could you apply that in terms of like which ones are maybe more sweet or tart? Uh, if you had a recipe where they're applied, could you analyze that recipe and understand? Could you evaluate the recipe and could you create new recipes with apples? This is the taken directly from Wikipedia. But you can see that at any point a student's learning, they're going to be at one of these phases. They may understand something, but they may not be able to create with it. So the capabilities we have today in Big Blue Button kind of map out to where the student is in, say, Bloom's taxonomy, and what tool that we provide for engagement could the instructor bring to help the student master a certain topic or a certain stage and move to the next stage. So we wanted to make sure that when we look at the instructor, we think about the world from their point of view, and a lot of it is engaging for learning. This is not a business presentation where you're just going to talk you need to gauge the students and have them be active. Uh, as the Moodle project would say, constructivism. You can teach content and get the students to construct something with it, get confused, get, you know, maybe not understand, but it's when that confusion state hits that the learning occurs. You're rewiring your brain to try to understand new concepts. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a few features and concepts. None of this is like a data associated with it, but I want to share with you where the project is in terms of thinking about how the instructor can engage students. One of the most used parts of our product is breakout rooms. So there's things that we want to do in the future uh, to make breakout rooms even more effective, uh, record them, allow the instructor to edit the title of a breakout room before putting students into it. I think there's actually a pull request for that. Uh, instead of the default slide being the same slide for all breakout rooms, maybe the instructor can pick a slide deck that has six slides and if there are six breakout rooms, each one has its own slide. The, a lot of the learning management systems will already have this concept of student groups. So students can collaborate together in groups. That group assignment could pass through the big blue button and we could use that to pre-populate the breakout room. And if the students are collaborating in breakout rooms, a very common desire is that, okay, I put you in breakout rooms for five minutes. I need you to come up with three points. You come back and you present on those three points. And the idea of bringing back the content relates to, can we capture the content of the whiteboard? Could that come back to the instructor and maybe as a presentation? So if there are six breakout rooms, a new presentation appears in the plus sign in the lower left-hand corner, and it has a new slide deck with six slides, each slide having the final state of each breakout room, and the instructor could get them to present. We also have this amazing platform that things are happening in real time, and one of the ideas we have is we call breakout vision. What if we could give the instructor a live view of what was happening in the various breakout rooms? So imagine the students are collaborating together, slides are getting created, maybe in the, ch the, the, uh, the shared notes, they're typing some content in and they can click a button and that shared notes, the bullets get transformed into a slide. And the instructor is there watching the slides being put together, maybe refreshed every 30 seconds, but they could get a sense of which uh, breakout room is kind of cooking along and which one maybe needs a little bit of help. So we call this breakout vision. Give the instructor vision of visibility in terms of what's happening in the breakout rooms. You could extend this concept to the whiteboard. So the whiteboard in Big Blue Button is pretty good. A lot of work went into it to improve the performance of it. Uh, based on feedback from the community, we would kind of want to add uh, more capabilities like could you edit and move the whiteboard annotations around? 
And could you download the whiteboard? This is sort of download the current slide with whiteboard annotation. That would feed back into breakout vision. But there's another use case where the student instructor isn't going to put students into groups, but has some task that they want students to work on for, say, five, 10 minutes. So let's say I've just been teaching about Pythagorean theorem. And could I give you, you being the 20 students, uh, a little assignment to work on or a little, a little project or a little assignment that basically says for the next five minutes, I want you to solve this Pythagorean theorem. And Big Blue Button goes into a mode where the students don't see each other in the user's list. They don't hear each other. They're kind of in their own space and their own whiteboard. And so imagine the instructor could do that and see all the whiteboard updates live. So uh, we have this today in multi-user whiteboard. So we call it whiteboard vision. So imagine the instructor could put students into groups and see every, everyone updating. And of course, you could see which students are struggling in terms of, uh, is there someone who's just not coming up with anything yet? Imagine the instructor could click, talk with that student one-on-one. -on -one. You can do these things in free switch, like whisper mode. And at the end of that five minute or 10 minute, a slide deck is created with every student name showing the final state of, the, of what they have worked on. That provides a record for the instructor later on they can refer to. But it also provides the instructor a really easy and compelling way to get students to apply something they just learned. And the instructor is right there to help them out. So this will be awesome. Again, these are things that we're thinking about. And we want to emphasize we do a lot of things in the core uh, to improve the product. But we think very much about what the instructor could do to engage. The next thing would be uh, providing a quiz. And the quiz, if you think about it, is a poll with a correct answer. So imagine in our polling interface, we give the instructor the ability to set up a poll, and then we give them the ability to check which one is the correct answer. So you're going to pose a question. There are some responses, but really one of them is correct, or maybe two of them are correct. So imagine you start a poll, and then as the poll goes through, you see the live results come back, but you also see whether the student got it correct or not. And then you would see a summary of the results. And this now gets towards your gauging students' comprehension of content. You're doing it live in the class in a way that's really easy to do. And of course, when we create this content and we know that you students were asked four or five questions during this session, it'd be really cool if that content got back into the LMS. So to the grade book or to some way that the instructor could see uh, reports across sessions. So, uh, I don't have a slide for this, but as we work on letting the instructor engage students, we really want to eventually get the data back in the LMS because this is where it lives. But for now, think of it in terms of a live class. Okay, so we have this ability of smart slides in the product where if you bring up a slide, so this is going taking quizzing another step further. Again, these are concepts. And imagine you could indicate in a slide which one was the correct answer. And uh, when I say smart slides, Big Blue Button would today, if you upload a slide like this, it would give you like an A, B, C, D. So it would say, hey, I look at, and I see something that's a statement with four options. I think this is a, a poll question. So I'm going to make it possible for you to start a poll with one click. And imagine we had the ability for the instructor to indicate on the slide somehow which one was the correct answer, and the students couldn't see that. I mean, we're processing the slides, bringing them into memory. So uh, imagine we came up with a way to do that. Well, now it becomes really easy to quiz because you could do a couple concepts in the slides and then there, now you come to a slide which instead of a polling question, it actually has a quiz and you just click one button and you start the quiz. To think about that for a bit, uh, what you get led to is the idea of could I do a couple slides, each one of them having a question with the correct answer, and could I kind of group that together and just let students work at their own pace through say three slides and I'll give them three minutes to work on it. So this is like a multi-slide quiz or a time quiz. And again, we're not asking the instructor to type stuff in live. Think of the slides as the program where the class is running. And at some point, Big Blue Button will use those slides to help the instructor engage the students for purposes of learning. So the, uh, the idea would be, is let's say you've got three slides, they all have poll questions in them. There's an indication of the correct answer. And Big Blue Button says, hey, would you like me to do a timed quiz on this? And uh, Big Blue Button goes, has and does it. And the instructor sits back. And as the students respond to the quiz, they light up showing which ones have got it correct and not. 
And again, imagine this data was available for the instructor to, to, to get an LMS or download. But now the class is becoming more engaging and we're helping the instructor engage students and giving the student instructor data on that engagement to help inform the instructor that maybe if nobody got question three correct, take five more minutes and just review that content in question three. So again, thinking about learning. All right, so what I've touched on are ways for the instructor to engage students and in addition to the ways we have already, it'd be really great if we could give the instructor some telemetry or maybe a live dashboard of what's going on during the class. So that if I'm asking polls, engaging students, putting them to breakout rooms, getting them to talk, raise your hand, could I get a summary of that that's going on so that I could see how my students are doing? Maybe there are students that have been really engaged. Maybe there are ones that are um, haven't really interacted at all, and I need to pull them out a little bit. So these are concepts, but imagine a big blue button. You could, as an instructor, go to another tab and see data which shows what are the top participants, and maybe the top participants are measured by, like, have they typed messages in the chat? Are they uh, using emojis? Have they raised their hand? Have they spoken? Have they written on the whiteboard? Like all these events we capture for recording. So we're looking at ways where we can actively take that data, summarize it in real time, and provide it back to the instructor in a form that they could see how the students are doing live during the live class. And so um, you could imagine there's various things that we're doing like right now in terms of who's talking, the system knows who's talking, typing, and so on. And of course, the system knows the polls as well. So every time the instructor or student responds to a poll, we could also show the instructor, here is, uh, you've done five polls or maybe three polls and two quizzes. Here's how students have responded to them. I can show you this live and you can use that data to teach the class. Okay, those are some ideas. There's lots of stuff in the uh, issue tracker in terms of other features. But again, I wanted to emphasize that when we think about Big Blue Button, we think about it as a global platform for instructors around the world to help them engage their students for the purpose of online learning. Many things, Big Blue Button has been used in many other areas, uh, which is great. Um, but we feel like if we nail that use case, we will have, you know, going back to the why Big Blue Button exists, done our best in that regard. And obviously people can build upon us in other ways. So I wanna to touch on the commercial ecosystem around it. So in terms of other people building around it, uh, there's a number of companies listed on the website for commercial support, and there are more coming. And Stephen Mugi is gonna be talking about this in terms of the Big Blue Button Foundation, which there actually has been a not-for-profit, or there is a not-for-profit legal entity called Big Blue Button Inc. that owns the copyright for the code and uh, there's, uh, it's a membership-based foundation, which we built up years ago, and there was some membership in it, but then we all kind of got busy. But it really makes sense to rejuvenate it now and to enable other companies around the world. If they want to contribute, they can, be jo they can join the foundation, and there'll be a path to get listed on the website. Okay, so in terms of like Big Blue Button, you can imagine when the core developers have their hands pretty busy just releasing the products, fixing issues, responding to uh, the mailing list, updating documentation, testing the releases, and making sure in terms of the core features and the features for engaging students, they're there. And we just never take our eye off the ball. There's a whole bunch of things that wrap around the Big Blue Button, which you can see commercial products around there, uh, inviting an external guests, scalable deployment, uh, inviting an external user, I think it's the same thing, like video SIP integration, analytics, which we're working on that more, so some of this is gonna move more into the core. Live stream, which I think you're gonna see uh, Ghazi talk about that uh, in the conference. Storage of recordings with CDN, recordings as videos, which I think you're gonna see move more into the core. There's a pull record, there's a, someone working in the community on that. Management tools, dial-in numbers, you know, you have to do a SIP trunking and you have to pay some externally. So my point is the Big Blue Button project isn't going to try to do everything. There needs to be space where commercial companies can add value, obviously for hosting and maybe some value added capabilities. But our goal in the Big Blue Button project is to make sure that we provide the world's best virtual classroom for instructors. And in doing so, if we know if we do that, more schools and colleges and universities want to build on top of it. And that will naturally create a market for commercial companies. So there are some things that 
you know, we're not going to try to do it. Maybe it's because other people are doing a really good job of it. And if we focus on the core, uh, everybody will win. And I'm, I'm going to give a plug to uh, Stephen Mugge's talk on the Big Blue Button Foundation. If you're a commercial company and you want to become more involved in the project, uh, to become a member of the foundation is going to be a really, a really good way for you to become closer and contribute to the project as well. Okay. I covered a lot, but there was a lot to cover. And it was really important that I kind of communicate how the project came to, to be where it is today, how we responded to COVID, the priorities we have in the core, and how we think about the world in terms of the instructor's point of view. And probably no more than anything else is education is the key to our future. The better the next generation learns and has access to high quality learning online, the better everybody will be. And in terms of our differentiations, we were born in the classroom. Carleton University is where it started. We are open source. We are informed and, and improved by developers and commercial companies and teachers all around the world. And because we focus on online learning, we do have very deep integrations of learning management system. And we continue to invest a lot of effort into improving those integrations. So if you want to become involved in the project, and many people here, I can see some familiar names, I have some suggestions. As an individual, you can join our development mailing list. And if you're familiar with Big Blue Button and you have gotten help in the past, help out somebody else, pay it forward. You can always improve, help improve the project by testing, improving the documentation, pull requests, and advocacy as well. It might be a tweet, sharing what you like about Big Blue Button, or uh, there's gonna be a presentation on the European Big Blue Button Association, which is a group that formed recently to advocate the benefit of open source and Big Blue Button in Europe. And we 100% support them, it's amazing. Obviously, if you find a bug, uh, it's really satisfying when we see someone send us a bug report, hear the steps to reproduce, and it's easy for a developer to, to reproduce it on their end. And that's half the effort right there. You can save us a lot of time. And if you are a commercial company and you want to uh, see Big Blue Button improve faster, you could send us uh, a pull request for a feature that's maybe on the issue tracker, uh, just like LionGate did for the background blur. The more you contribute to the project, the more you get back. And it is how the acceleration of the project has happened over the last 14 months. We all hang out on the mailing list. Feel free to send me email directly. I am just one person. I have this role of product manager, but there are over 100 people that have contributed to Big Blue Button. Almost 30,000 pull, request, pull requests have gone in or commits, and it is truly a global community. And I, again, it's a pleasure to share with you uh, where we've been thinking about the last 14, 12, 14 years, and we are focused on for the project. All right, at this point, I will do my best to answer questions. Uh, and Jess, if you want, or Ben, I'm gonna actually scroll back through I saw a bunch of questions coming up, so let me just have, uh, come in, in the as they order. Uh, 4.0. So, uh, Wade, the existing settings from plugin in 3.0. I think you're in Moodle. So, the Moodle plugin will actually be a different beast. It will be in the core, uh, so that you will actually you will you could actually um, not have to run an external plugin. And I know that there's work underway to make sure it's going to be seamless to move in. So uh, you'll get more documentation around that. We'll, we'll make it clear how you can go from the plugin to the Moodle core. Uh, I can see some discussions on the config file and the overrides, which came in, which merit to appreciate Martin and others who uh, have contributed to it. Uh, raise hand and unmute on talking. Currently, I recognize more often the users that are muted than those that are not. Not sure, Martin, what you're, uh, Raymer, what you're asking about. Um, in, in fact, I think the other feature I've, we've asked for is when the raise hand dialog box comes, comes up, it lists the people who raise their hand. Clicking on that currently lowers their hand, but I think clicking on the icon might make more sense to open up a private chat with them. I see some discussion on H5P. Whether we build in external HTML5 components into Big Blue Button, it's something we thought about a lot. H5V is an obvious choice. Uh, the live, the YouTube streaming or the sharing a, a video inside of Big Blue Button was an example of that. We're embedding a player inside of the product. 
Uh, Leon, the WordPress integration. So uh, we just can't do everything. We worked on it for a couple of years and we just had to shift our gears uh, as the integration with Moodle became far more important to the world. So our, our hope that there is a WordPress developer out there, uh, just like there's a Mattermost developer that's taking up Mattermost, there's a WordPress developer out there that would find a lot of satisfaction in making sure Big Blue Button has the world's best integration with WordPress. That would be awesome. It's not something the core developers are going to be working on, but it is something that's really good if a WordPress developer, because uh, we're not WordPress experts. There are other people who are. Yes, for breakout vision, blackboard vision, we're going to be working on it. Uh, Way we would love to push the results back to the LMS. Uh, Vincent, good suggestion about nonlinear navigation through the presentation slides. We did have that actually in the Flash client where you can get like the thumbnails of it. Uh, you can right now click on the, uh, the slide index as a presenter and jump back and forth, but you don't see the thumbnails. Something would be nice to get to. Um, and in terms of learning analytics, uh, we very much would respect people's privacy. Whatever we did in terms of a live dashboard, we would make it so that it could be a feature that could be enabled or disabled. We understand that in times, in, in some places, you want a live class to occur and nothing from that class to be stored on the server afterwards. So maybe we can provide some data live, which could be turned on and off, uh, but we could also make sure we provide it so that it cannot be, there's nothing stored on the server after the session's done. Uh, Padma, how can a new startup work with Big Blue Button? Join the community. I gave some examples here of how you can become more involved. The more you contribute, the more you get back. Uh, VBB guest, uh, the recording links. I think you, if you attended Jesus's talk yesterday with Scale Light, we are working on protective recording links. So this is what you're using Scale Light. Uh, it would serve up the recording links and it would serve them up in a way that they were only available for six first I'd say six hours, and they'd only be visible for the person who clicked on them. Uh, Leon, so when you join the groups, you have to give some reason why you're joining. If anybody who joins the groups just gives a blank reason or no reason, we cannot distinguish you from spam or a spam bot. So we will deny the application. Just say some words about why you're joining them and we'll accept you. Uh, Google Summer of Code, we did in the past, uh, we just, been so busy that we haven't made the application for it. Maybe next year. Uh, Mike, uh, getting Big Blue Button stack into Debian. I think this is going to be much easier once we release the packaging for it. Um, and that we expect that it will make it possible that other people can improve upon it and maybe get us into Debian. We look at other open source projects um, by GitLab and others that have very systematic delivery process, really strong. We want to get there. Honestly, in the last 14 months when COVID hit, uh, we just put all our focus into improving the core of the product so that we could uh, make sure that it was working well. And we knew that we could, we could get to the packaging later. Uh, it just wasn't going to work so well if we got the packaging out and the product wasn't working so well. Um, yeah, and I think that was the right decision, looking at Baden Wutenberg and others. Uh, can we download the video of the presentation? That will be recording this video, which is, is, is being worked on in the community. Lori, how would you plan to push back results to LMS? Could be LTI advantage. Uh, it's very simple. You just can push back a grade book. Because we're integrated into the core of many learning management systems, we have a little bit more advantage over an LTI integration, of which there is the LTI 1.3 we're working on as well. But uh, we're going to take advantage of some of the integrations we've built up over the years. Uh, integrate Meteor slides from LMS, Nextcloud, or external sources. That would be extending the ability to share content. So right now you can share it if it's YouTube, PeerTube, Vimeo, or even just a URL to an MP4 file. So maybe in Nextcloud, if, it, if you can get a URL to an MP4 file that you've uploaded to Nextcloud, you should be able to share it live in the Big Blue Button session. Uh, in Panama, parental support, you're going to need to give us a bit more information on that. Um, 
We are inside of a learning management system. So anytime that their uh, users are using us, we are a tool embedded inside of it. There would have been terms and conditions that would have been applied. Anyone providing commercial hosting for Big Blue Button would be a data processor underneath the LMS and usually has a relationship with the LMS. They should. And uh, yeah, that the answer to that would be more in context. Really good questions, guys. I just want to be uh, mindful just that we have one minute left with this session. I've gone ahead and I posted the link to the next session with Anton. Uh, that's beginning at 1145. So Fred, if you, I don't know if you want to just hang out here, answer some more questions and whatnot. Um, but I just want to let people know that the next session is beginning uh, and the link is available in the chat for them. All right. I'm going to stop the recording and I'll stay linger for a few more minutes. Um, just, I emphasize again, everybody, if you like what we're doing, the Big Blue Button Project, uh, the more you contribute, the more you get back. We welcome contributions from everybody. Uh, but we do have a very core group of committers. I make sure the quality is there. And it's how we've been able to improve the product over the years. So looking forward to working with you. Thanks for coming out.